Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a tutorial for uh, simple AI movements, uh, which we can build using uh, Unreal Engine Blueprints. Uh, first of all, we'll implement uh, a random movement within a radius uh, around uh, a given point. Next thing is uh, how we can uh, make a character to move uh, along a given path. Also, how we can make characters to follow our main character. We are starting with a default top-down project. Project already has a character that can walk around. Now let's create a new blueprint. So, and the parent class of this blueprint uh, is going to be the P top-down character. Now let's call this new blueprint as. Uh, the top-down character AI. This way, uh, we inherit all the components from the BP top-down character class, and we can add a new functionality we need without interfering with the original class. To track our progress, let's put a couple of uh, newly created uh, blueprints into the world. As of now, they don't do anything. Firstly, let's make these characters to move randomly. Let's start by storing the original location of the actor. Uh, this is, uh, will be the position the actor is going to be moving around. Then, we need a custom event. I called it event move. So in this event, uh, first we get uh, a random uh, reachable point, radius uh, within uh, our original position, then we simply tell uh, our character to move to this point. Regardless of the success or fail, we repeat this in the loop. Uh, this way, our character will be moving from point to point uh, within uh, the radius uh, around uh, its original location. And uh, the last thing to make this work is to start the loop. I'm going to call this custom event. Uh, from the begin play event. Compile, save, let's check this out. So both uh, characters controlled by AI now moving randomly. Now let's make these characters move by the predictable paths. For the movement along the path, uh, we're going to use the same basic structure. But first of all, uh, we need to or original actor transform instead of uh, original position because uh, for the movement along the path we will need not only the original position of the actor but also the original rotation. I created uh, a new variable called original transform and set it uh, during the begin play event. Next I created a variable called waypoints uh, this is uh, an array of uh, vectors, and uh, this is going to represent basically waypoints our character should follow while moving. Uh, the default value is uh, just two waypoints, two meters uh, in front of the uh, character and uh, two meters uh, behind it. Uh, another variable I created uh, is a current waypoint. It's an integer variable representing the index of the current waypoint. We are going to use it to iterate over the waypoints array. This time, in order to get uh, the destination of our movement, first we uh, get the current waypoint from the waypoints array. Uh, then uh, we need uh, to rotate this vector using the original uh, actor transform. Uh, this is done in order to make these uh, waypoints uh, relative to the uh, original actor rotation. Uh, we need this because uh, if uh, you rotate uh, the actor, like this one, uh, you still uh, want it to move uh, relatively to its uh, updated rotation. Like move uh, here and then, let's say, uh, back. And this actor should move... Uh, here and then back. But if we didn't rotate uh, the waypoint uh, vector, this actor would move 
still like uh, in this uh, direction. Yeah, next thing uh, we get uh, the original transform location and uh, add it with the uh, uh, waypoint vector we just uh, calculated, then pass it to the destination of the movement block. Yeah, by the way, in order to get uh, this one, uh, I just get uh, the transform and then uh, split uh, the structure pin. Uh, but this way, Hector would move to only the first waypoint. Now we need to create a logic to update the current waypoint. After every move, uh, regardless of the success or failure, uh, yeah, we want to update the current waypoint. So, yeah, first of all, we uh, increase it by one. And the second thing, uh, we take it by uh, modular of the array length. Uh, this way, it. Uh, won't uh, overflow the array length, we'll get a cycle of indexes. In our case, we have array of length 2 by default, so it's going to be like 0, 1, 0, 1. Now let's check how it works. Nice. So our characters move uh, forward and backward, uh, and they do so uh, relatively to its original uh, rotation. But now we lost the functionality we implemented previously. So let's see how we can combine uh, both in order to get an extendable and reusable uh, blueprint. In order to decide if we want to move along a path, let's check the waypoints array length. If it's greater than zero, then let's uh, follow the path of uh, moving along uh, the path. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's follow the previous, uh, previously implemented path of uh, moving randomly uh, in the radius. And once again, uh, let's uh, create a loop here and uh, connect uh, success and fail pins with the event move. I'm going to cre create more characters uh, in order to play with uh, our functionality a little bit. So, in order to see uh, what it can do. Okay, so these two characters they move uh, back and forth. Uh, yeah, let's add a couple of waypoints to this one to see how it works. This way, uh, this character should follow a square path. For this one, let's uh, remove all the waypoints and see if it still can uh, move randomly. And for this one, let's uh, leave only one endpoint. So, yeah, this way we can even. Uh, make this character to stay stand still. So this one stays still. Uh, this one moves uh, in a square. And uh, yeah, this one just moves randomly. Yeah, by the way, they also follow the navigation. If they cannot do the straight path, they go the path they can do. And the last uh, thing to do, but not the least, uh, let's think how we can uh, make the characters to follow like our main character. It can be used uh, for uh, friendly characters, uh, like for companions, uh, for example, uh, or for enemies, for example, if they want to apply some damage to. First of all, in order to make our NPC to follow the main character, we need to detect it. So I created a, a sphere collision and called it a detector. I set uh, the sphere radius to be 10 meters. Uh, then let's use the on component begin overlap uh, for this uh, detector sphere. And uh, first we need to check the overlapped actor is a pawn. Yeah, because uh, we don't want uh, the, uh, our NPCs to follow any actor uh, overlapping the sphere. They, we don't want to like them to follow themselves and uh, other NPCs. Uh, the next thing we check that uh, this pawn is uh, controlled by a player, and only after that we set uh, the target variable. And the target variable is uh, just uh, an actor variable. Actually, we can make it private. Uh, the next uh, thing we need is that uh, basically we want. Uh, our NPCs to follow the targets 
continuously, then uh, yeah, let's call the AI movement uh, basically on every tick. Our actor can move, so yeah, we need to call it uh, continuously in order to update the location uh, our NPCs uh, should follow. Uh, let's check this out. So our NPCs uh, start to follow the actor. And uh, yeah, if we approach another one, it also detects our main character and starts uh, following it. It looks uh, quite uh, natural, right? So they uh, go around the obstacles. They don't follow the same path. Uh, and so on. Now let's think how we combine this following uh, functionality with the functionality we had uh, previously. First thing, uh, let's add the check uh, for the target, our event move. If the target is not valid, so basically if it's not present, then we can do our uh, previous logic. Also in the event tick, we need to add this check as well. But uh, this time we want to follow the target only if it's valid. Yeah, and uh, this is it. Let's check uh, the result. And also, by the way, I uh, decreased the detector uh, radius to 4 meters uh, because it's uh, easier to demonstrate uh, this way. So yeah, when we are uh, keeping enough distance, the NPCs, uh, they are busy with uh, their own business. But uh, as we approach uh, close enough, they start following uh, us. This one. Yeah, let's uh, try to... Okay, so yeah, this one also started following us. That's it, basically. Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. It really can help the channel grow. In the next videos. Bye bye.